In the Half-Life universe exists a race of beings who appear to be completely unstoppable. Moving through the universe and taking over any sentient and more than likely non-sentient races they come across, they bid them to do their work and add them to their ever-growing empire. But how is it possible that this particular race has coaxed all these different beings into working in their favor? Well, mainly because they don't actually do the dirty work themselves. They rely on the native species of a conquered world to fulfill their wishes. So today, we will be talking about the Combine, but more specifically about the alterations to the humans who have bowed before the Combine and given up their humanity in the process. What sort of changes do they undergo the further up in rank they achieve? Well, if you are a man, let's just say you could probably be singing soprano if humanity ever regains its freedom. Anyhow, let's get back to the changes that are heavily biological and are completely necessary to control a rebellious human mind. Also, if I sound a little weird, uh, I went out last night and I feel awful. As with most of my episodes, we must start from the beginning to see how we got to small bands of roaming humans trying to fight an alien empire with with very little success. After Gordon Freeman had defeated the giant baby head in the sky known as Nihilanth, and I'm pretty sure I said that right because apparently it's not Nihilanth. Anyways, it turns out that that may have actually been worse for humanity. The Zen universe is what stood between our fledgling space exploring species and a massive consuming empire that roamed the cosmos subduing more primitive beings and completely taking over their planet. With no barrier anymore, the Combine moved through the Zen universe and onto Earth. At this point in time, Earth was contending with portal storms popping up across the planet, releasing dangerous Zen wildlife onto Earth. Not only was it capable of ending the naturally occurring fauna on Earth, but would also be quite capable of game-ending this planet's apex species, humans. In response, militaries were mobilized, but most people just fled to cities for safety. Perimeters were set up, but it was all about to get way worse. During the onslaught of head crabs, bull squids, and those weird head munchers that pull you up into the ceiling, untold amounts of people would fall in this initial wave. While this was happening, other portals began to open up and release these combine soldiers into the area. These non-native soldiers quickly ran through our military personnel and would go on to overwhelm all of Earth's military in only about seven hours. The UN made a decisive call on it to save the remaining lives still at stake, but it's not like they really had much of a choice. They called the war after only seven hours and stepped down as world leaders. In the aftermath, humans were herded into cities as the rest of the planet had become a wasteland of Zen wildlife and pockets of human resistance. Dr. Breen was appointed the Earth's leader, albeit he's really only a puppet for the combine combine leaders. So you're sitting there, you and your family are hungry, you're in a city, either being punched or beaten by a nightstick almost daily, and your species has been conquered. What do you do? Well, it comes down to about three choices really. Either you join the resistance and have a virtually guaranteed game in, and if you have a family, that might not be ideal. You could stay a civilian and be beaten all the time and suppressed and hungry, or you could join up with the combine forces to do a little beating of your own and get served meals for you and your family. Granted, there's really only one choice, and that's the first one, but I guess it can be seen how choice three might be more appealing. If you choose choice two, what are you even doing with your life? So, you join up with the Combine and become something known as a Civil Protection Officer. Civil Protection Officers are essentially the thought police and they enforce inside of the city limits in Half-Life. They will raid apartments for people, permeate public spaces to make sure dissenting opinions aren't being discussed, but most importantly, they will knock over cans from the trash and tell you to pick them up. Basically, these are your standard power trippers, much like the mods on Reddit. Civil Protection Officers, or CPs, are really the only thing civilians have to usually contend with, and they are are, after all, only humans themselves. Sporting armor on their chest, admin, groin area, and head, they are relatively protected from anything that civilians could get their hands on. Taking a look under the suit, however, we would not see anything too different from you or I. They are just your standard human who have betrayed their species. This is actually how Barney was able to infiltrate the CPs and learn about upcoming raids and movements. CPs are relatively easy to deal with in combat, they sport a Kevlar covering on their chest, admin, and groin area as explained earlier, and wear face masks and helmets on on their heads containing cheaply made air filters and built-in radios. CPs are not really highly trained either. The Combine would not want your standard human off the streets to possess advanced tactical or strategic knowledge of the battlefield, so they are educated exceedingly basic and are usually instructed by dispatch on how to proceed. They possess a full range of human emotions, again going back to the power tripping CP, and experience anger, pain, fear, and many other types of feelings. But let's say that you are special for all the wrong reasons. You started as a CP, but a call comes through naming you specific specifically in a recent raid as integral to its success. An offer is put forth to continue your training and move up the ladder. The rewards will be greater, but so will the sacrifice as well as punishment should you fail. You think to yourself, eh, the kids are grown. Elizabeth probably been gone for five years now after joining the resistance movement. Screw it. You accept the offer, and now you're heading to the higher tier that will take away your humanity, but make you stronger than what you once were. You will now be known as an Overwatch soldier. If civil protection is considered to be officers, then Overwatch soldiers, as the name implies, are essentially 
essentially military. Still genetically human, these are the guys who go out into Earth's wastelands, staffing the bases, and looking for any remaining resistance in those areas. Interestingly, Overwatch soldiers may have always been soldiers as well. Prior to the Seven Hour War, captured soldiers who demonstrated that they were worth more alive than game ended would be inducted into the program. But then the question remains, how do you change the hearts and minds of those inducted to now serve the beings they were once fighting with their fellow soldiers and friends against? Well, by erasing the mind, of course. So now we finally get into some biology of these soldiers, because this is where the actual augmentations are actually done. So, uh, it gets pretty science heavy. How do we know that there are augmentations? In certain portions of the game, you can actually see a de-armored civil protection officer awaiting some sort of surgery. His eyes are open, which indicates he's not asleep, but it's still very much human. Based upon this and the lore in the game, we have an idea of what Overwatch soldiers go through to become the species traders that they are. In Nova Prospect, these augmentations are carried out to the human form, but what exactly is going on underneath the armor to make this person a fearless Gordon hunting machine. Well, the first thing that would need to be completed is to erase the assumed human weaknesses, and the biggest one you have is your memory. Already known to our species now as electroshock therapy, it gets a bad rap, but as a side note, it actually can't help with severe depression in a lot of cases. So, it's not all bad. One of the, uh, I guess you could say unintended consequences of it is that it can kind of factory reset your brain. <laughs> when our neurons actually communicate with one another, it sends an electrical signal down the axon of the nerve, which will instruct the uh, ends of the nerve to release chemicals into the synaptic gap to communicate with the next neuron. But we've all passed high school biology, I'm certain, but this is how we communicate. Each neuron has roughly about 25,000 connections, which accounts for a massive amount of signaling. When an electrical current is applied to these areas, it can send the brain into an almost seizure-like state. With the jolt of electricity running through our brain, it is possible this could force new connections and destroy old ones. These connections are crucial as memory is based upon them within the brain and not so much just a single neuron. Think of memory as a pattern of chemical and electrical signaling in the brain for reference. With the addition of more electricity, this can cause a neuron to almost sort of forget how to signal that way again, which in turn erases the memory. The Overwatch soldier is more than likely shocked many times to erase everything. Their family, life pre-war, and friends are all forgotten with this therapy, which in turn erases the weakness of their connections with others. When they wake up, they are a clean slate, and to them, the Combine have always been in power, so why even side with humanity? On top of electroshock therapy, there are also certain operations performed in the brain that will change the person and how they react. Humans are notorious for emotions, and to a certain degree, we can be ruled by them. Empathy, anger, happiness, sadness, all leads us to react differently over time. However, the main thing here is empathy. This serves as an issue for any Overwatch soldier. The Combine makes sure to remove this perceived weakness specifically. There are quite a few areas that would need to be subdued to remove the area of empathy, such as the anterior insul, anterior mid cingulate cortex, somatosensory cortex, and right amygdala areas. With these areas cut off from the surrounding neural tissue or altered by machinery in another way, this would stop the brain from siding with any resistance members as they fulfill their orders. In fact, we see in psychopaths that to some degree the ventral striatum will become active, which is known to give a person a sense of pleasure as they see others in pain. This area may be stimulated upon fulfillment of orders via implants, which reinforces the feel good of doing a job emotion. This is not to say though that they are completely emotionless as you can't really take everything out Otherwise, you just sort of end up with a vegetable not a human some emotional responses do exist in overwatch soldiers Such as the ability to be motivated as when dr. Breen gave a speech or anger when they become injured anger typically stems from the amygdala as well as other various portions of the brain So this would suggest that it is still intact inside of the brain case But certain portions of the amygdala would be altered to produce desired results with their brain altered and changed to make them less human You would imagine that would probably be enough. However, it is not the end of these extensive modifications. The vocal cords are replaced entirely by a vocoder. That's right, that is a word I've never said before, which will produce mechanical speech that we hear. Presumably, these would be hooked up to the surrounding nerve tissue that makes our vocal cords contract and relax to produce sound. Mine are having trouble relaxing and contracting right now, which is why I sound weird. The radio is hooked directly up into this area, which will immediately push it to other radios around them. This would actually be quite useful as an Overwatch soldier experiencing something like complete failure of of lungs or some sort of chest compression, they could still speak and call out to surrounding soldiers despite no air entering the lungs or flowing over the vocal cords. In the abdomen and chest, there are also quite a few changes, which we are not told as to what they are, but judging by the Overwatch soldiers' propensity to operate in highly hazardous environments for long periods of time, their biochemistry would need to be altered. More effective lungs and cardiac tissue would be paramount, so these would more than likely be bolstered to resist fatigue and damage. Pushing more deeply oxygenated blood around the body would create stronger, more resilient soldiers capable of being out in the field for an extended
extended periods of time. The digestive system would more than likely be altered as well to absorb more nutrients from food eaten. This would also allow the body to remain functional and stave off becoming tired, allowing the human form to continue patrolling well past what a normal person would be able to do. And also, more than likely judging by the alien technology implanted, I would also go on a limb to say that any waste produced by the body would more than likely be destroyed in-house by internal technology, meaning that really, there's no bathroom breaks. Now remember, these are proposed ideas. Again, it doesn't go into too much detail as to what these modifications are, but judging by how extensive they are and the locations that we can see on the body, it says to me that these are the basic problems that would need to be fixed. And finally, just so you guys know, we are animals, and animals are driven to reproduce, and sometimes in males, the second brain takes over. As expected, this could cause issues with soldiers siding with resistance members that they probably find attractive, which means they can be coaxed into switching sides. The Combine recognize this issue and have completely taken care of it at its source. Anything that made you male or female is cut off. As an Overwatch soldier, you forfeit your reproductive rights to serve the Combine. Is it worth it? Survey says, not in this lifetime. With all these modifications, while never explicitly shown, it can be presumed that to a certain degree their strength has increased because of their enhanced meat suits. Able to hit Gordon or any resistant members with the butt of their pew pure, this can cause contusions and break bones. With the HEV suit, a lot of this is negated, but even still, your health will suffer to a certain degree. So again, it can be inferred that stronger systems in the body equate to stronger muscle potential. Overall though, just as a, a little bit of extra lore for you, it's actually not that great being an Overwatch soldier. Some seemingly were forced into it, like I mentioned earlier as their previous existence as an Earth soldier, but interestingly, they are nearly constantly threatened by their superiors. The threat of a permanent off-world assignment still holds weight for them should they fail their mission. This would imply that they do prefer Earth over other places, so they are still exhibiting some form of thinking in their minds, even if it is just consequences of not fulfilling orders. But I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone enjoyed my video and that I didn't sound like crap. If you did, leaving a like helps the video and subbing is a great way to stay up to date when I do post. I'll drop my Twitter, Discord, Merch, and Patreon links if anybody is interested in that, and I would like to thank a few of my patrons. Freedom Units 44, Punished Meat, Red Cloud, Spartan Night Glider, and The Last Shinobi. Thank you guys for your support, and to the rest of my patrons, I thank you as well. You guys are ballers. Anyhow, that's going to do it for me. Thanks for watching, and I will see y'all in the next one.